All right, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Hawa Kakudash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kohalayim La Alahai Nawa, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kahakudash, Shalom Ma Barakim, La Bakayarim Yasha Allah, Washin Kabad, Gawala Wakab, Sukonya Nawa, Waha Shaliyakunua Yasha Allah Ba'ith. All right. What I just said in the ancient Hebrew, or the Lashwan Kudash, which means the holy tongue, um, is all praise to the Heavenly Father. His name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. All right. I also said peace and blessings to the elect of Israel and double honors to our elders and apostles of Israel coming back in these times, <clears throat> better known as a great millstone. All right, so I want to um, edify on some information that was passed along to me. I'm going to bring out some precepts on it, uh, going and specifically centered around the tribe of Gad. Um, this article was sent to me, uh, and it's entitled uh, Uncovering the Traumatic History of One Native American Boarding School in the Midwest. And it's centered around the school called Regis, uh, I think a St. Regis Boarding School in St. Louis, uh, Missouri. All right, and the various other schools that are in Kansas. And you can see the date here. This is uh, April 28th, you know, so this came out today. But I'm going to read a few sections of this, and then I'm going to get some scriptures through the Spirit. And um, you just kind of go through, go in the Spirit, you know. Shalom to all the elect that are tuning in. So I want to jump down here. Um, and these schools, uh, they were funded. All right, let me see here. It says, what, what would start with a small... Let me zoom in so y'all can see. All right. Well, we'll start with a small number of schools following the Indian Civilization Fund Act in 1819. would eventually grow to more than 350 government-funded and often church-run schools across the United States in the 19th and 20th centuries, according to the Na National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition. So Esau was f fully backed his wickedness. All right, because his government, of course, govern means to have domination or to control something. All right. And uh, in the way one way that he did it was he said it was often church run. So he had to bring spirituality into it all right, because he understood that our people are right, specifically the tribe of Gad and other 10 tribes as well, too. They had a lot of spirituality to them. All right. So they knew that if they could latch on to that, control that, that then they could take over our people. And that's what they did. All right, so let me, um, the video is called Recompense, and that's one thing the Lord loves is justice and judgment, all right, and he's going to get it, all right, he's going to get it for his people. It says, Second Thessalonians, Paul's letter to the Israelite foreigners that lived in Thessalonica, this, uh, the second chapter, the uh, first, second book, uh, first chapter to the Israelite foreigners. Verse 6, it says, seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. All right, and the thing that was troubling, specifically for the tribe of Gad, and we all went through this, was that assimilation process that, I, that they forced our people into. All right, now it says, as legislation that would create a federal commission to explore countries' history with boarding schools has stalled efforts from others, such as the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition, have continued. The Society of Jesus, widely known as the Jesuits, which ran a number of these schools, so that's why I said they were often church run, as well as local researchers are trying to provide a more complete picture of what life was like before, during, and after the school's existence. Now, the reason why I read this, why I entitled it Recompense, is because a payback has to come before that. We're talking about a full-blown generational uh, brainwashing, brainwashing that was done upon uh, one of the tribes of Israel. All right, so when we look at recompense, it says compensation, payment for a debt, obligation, satisfaction, amends, retribution, punishment. All right, and this is the main thing. This is what's going to come, retribution and punishment. It says uh, the notion is the equivalent of recompense for anything given, especially uh, reparation or restitution to another for something wrong done to him. All right. And that's what the Lord is referring to and what he loves when he says, seeing it is a righteous thing. All right, I mean, it's it's correct. It's the right thing to do. 
with the Most High Yahweh, Baha Shemi Shai, to recompense tribulation that trouble you, and to though and to you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his holy angels in the flame and flame and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the most high. Because those Jesuits, what they did, they used the scriptures. And I'm going to read some more in this article. They used the scriptures to manipulate Jake or right, into being wicked, you know, like changing their chores uh, and their tasks and things using scriptures like obey your master and things like that and avoiding the scriptures that speak about judgment and payback it says in that obey not the gospel of our lord yahweh shai hamashiach and this is how the recompense is going to come ultimately in the flaming fire because right now you have putin you got shooting putin or russia who just uh they just test fired a missile called satan too and that thing can reach up to i think it said like eleven thousand two hundred and maybe 300 miles meaning it could hit it could hit countries in the uh, in the UK. It could hit uh, the US. It could hit anywhere. All right. And Putin said that that missile, okay, that missile that's going to take vengeance and have the spirit of the Lord behind it. All right. It's not. It can break through any defense system on Earth. Nobody can stop it. So that's one of the way recompense is going to come back. Now I also want to read this scripture here, Mashalia. All right, Mashalia, Mashalia, which is Proverbs twenty-one and three says to do justice and judgment is more acceptable of the Lord than sacrifice you see that to do justice and judgment is more acceptable all right and justice and judgment was not being done in these places all right I'm gonna jump down uh, I'll read this real quick this is the name of the school the local boarding school st. Regis seminary opened opened May 11th 1824 in Florence, uh, Florence Missouri as it starts, it housed two boys from the from the uh, Suk tribe, who were later joined by three from the Lowe tribe. It was all a part of Bishop Louis Valentine William DeBar's vision to familiarize his young missionaries with their manners and languages. Over time, the school would take in thirty boys. So that's one of the points there. Um, and the, with Esau, we're going to find out that these Jesuits are actually Edomites. Um, they're gonna have to get. They're gonna get paid back. All right, for 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 taking the young Gadite Bunyam, our children, if you will, and making them learn the different manners and languages of, of them of the heathen. All right, now I'm gonna jump down here. Uh, here we go. It says, uh, "Unquestionable amounts of children never had justice." Proverbs 21 and 3. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable of the Lord Yahweh than sacrifice. All right, and this was a wicked sacrifice that Esau made, just like Cain. All right, it's the same man. That's why we said Cain's spirit came back in the form of Esau or the Edomites. All right, and it spread throughout his people. That's how they get down, said Kent Blancet, associate professor of indigenous studies and history at the University of Kansas. Excuse me. Salakia, and for that there is a cost. The children could have gone on to be writers, Einstein's leaders in their communities. Now, um... Yeah, let me yeah, let me read this. It says it is important for us to know our historical past, no matter how uh, nuanced, uh, nuanced, no matter how diverse, no matter how tragic at times, no matter how triumphal. Warren said, and the main point is is that we need to know these things, no matter how tragic, because what's going to happen before them? You know, what's going to happen to our people for the things that uh, that they've gone through? Where is the payback? for the generational uh, trauma that's been placed upon Gad. All right. So um, let me read this next scripture about Gad, actually. So this is the prophecy. This is how we know who Gad is. All right. And it's all through faith. All right. It's through faith. You're not going to be able to track a Gadite's lineage. Someone around, walking around, calling themselves uh, a swift deer or Sweet Cedar or whatever the, you know, the names Gabby have and Running Wolf, which are more spiritual than a lot of the names we got, to be completely honest. But um, this is this is them right here. Our forefather, Jacob. All right. He was a priest. All right, he was a priest. Not only was he a priest, but he was also a prophet. Yaquab was a prophet. All right. Genesis of Barashiath 49 and 1. It says, And Jacob called his sons and said unto 
and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. So here we have in Genesis, Jacob talking about the last days. All right. He knew he saw the things that would happen to the tribe, specifically his sons. So he told them, come together. All right. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel, your father. Right. Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Now, when we go down here and he gets to this, his, his son, Gad. All right. Which Gad actually means troop. It says a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So the at the last, what does that mean? Well, and when you read in Revelation, the seventh chapter, it does say that 12,000 out of the tribe of Gad were sealed. All right. And that's at the last. Then, of course, you have the elect family and children, men, women and children of the one third that also believe of Gad that are going to get uh, their payback. All right. They're going to get their recompense uh, through the spirit. Let me just. Um, now, since I'm done with that, it says overcome at the last. Let me just show that. Show you that. All right. You do have a lot of women and, and men who might not necessarily be prophets and children that listen all right, and that are Gadites that are uh, that are going to be delivered and get their payback. Are right, they going to re receive a recompense, which the Lord loves? Revelation 11 and 18. And the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great. And she just destroy them, which destroyed the earth. All right. And we're going into about who destroyed the earth in 1819. Um, that's when Memphis was actually given its name, which makes more sense as to why this place is called spiritually Egypt, because the Memphis in Tennessee is situated on the uh, Mississippi River. The Memphis in Egypt is situated on the Nile River. All right. Down there in Memphis, they got a uh, they got a stadium with a pyramid with a light shooting out of the top of it. And you got pyramids over there in uh, Memphis, Egypt. All right. And Andrew Jackson, the Indian killer, was uh, I think he gave it the name. All right. But in 1819, years before St. Regis erected its boarding schools, Congress enacted the Civil the Civilization Fund Act. The law stated the president could instruct native people in every case where he shall judge improvement in the habitats of a condition of such Indians practicable to be employed capable persons of good moral character. It also called for teaching their children in writing and arithmetic. All right, now this said in every case where he shall judge improvement. So that's what I'm saying. The Lord loves justice and judgment, but uh, the president at the time, he wasn't judging correctly. All right, and something has to be done for that. All right, let me read the scripture here in Proverbs. Proverbs 22 and 28. All right. Very important scripture here. It says, remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. All right. And that's 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 basic. All right. Let me jump up a little bit. All right. Proverbs 22 and 7, it says, if thou have nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? You know what I'm saying? Esau has Esau has no business placing a uh, value on our living expenses, you know, a.k.a. rent. All right. These things shouldn't be. Because when it comes down to it, these Edomites, the Amalekites, those that rule the world, they're not paying rent. They're, they haven't, they've never paid rent and they're never thinking about it all right, until the kingdom comes. All right, Because what have they done? They've removed the ancient landmarks, what the Lord told us not to do. Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. And who was here first? All right, in the so-called United States, all right, before it was that, it was the land of Azareth, all right, or the land where never mankind dwelt. And there was their landmark was already set here. All right, you had the tribes of Gad, the different tribes of Gad lived here. All right, and this is what they looked like. All right, you got several brothers. We got several brothers in this area from the tribe of Gad. All right, from the um, brothers from the Piscataway Nation, you know, Cherokee, different tribes. You know, this is who uh, Jacob was prophesying to. All right, and they, look at all the fringes. They all got fringes, you know. These are the Gadites. This is the tribe of Gad, just so you can have a visual. You know, a royal, regal people. These aren't savages, all right. They had rules, they had customs, all right. But then Esau snuck in, you know. Esau snuck in.
started instituting these prisons. All right, he started instituting these prisons where he would where he would take these Gadites. All right, and you can watch. Uh, um, there's a good there's a good series on YouTube. It's called the uh, the Canary Effect. All right, it's called the Canary Effect, and it goes in it goes in uh, a lot about this. All right. Now the next scripture I kind of want to go into here is Deuteronomy 28. Because what you guys got to understand is that you're going to get payback for what happened to you, but you got to understand that why it happened to you in the first place. You know, the Lord, whenever the Lord does something, he always gives a reason why or either before or after. All right. So now this is um, Deuteronomy 28. Let's do it. We got to do it the old school way. Deuteronomy 28. And I'm going to jump back to 43. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Let's do it right. All right. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently. This is Moses talking to his people. Moses being a Levite talking to the rest of the tribes. All right. Because he had received the covenants, the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, this is titled what? The blessing at uh, Gerzim. All right. So we have, and it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, your power, Yahweh Allah by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. The Lord, thy power will bless thee high, will bless that the Lord, thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All right. So the Lord said that he would give us, uh, put us above everybody. If under the contingency that we kept his uh, commandments. Now, when we jump down to 15, it says the consequences of disobedience. But it, but it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, Yahweh Alahayaka, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to observe to do all his commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, when we jump down, now, if you look, the blessings were only 15 verses, but the thing is, those blessings, they encompass so much, you know, so much more could have been written, but it was just enough because there's blessings within blessings. All right. Now, the Lord went in detail from verse 16 on so that we can know who we are today, because that's what they're in place for. All right. If we go to um, Deuteronomy 28 and 45, it says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and statutes which he commanded thee and they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever all right so the Israelites at one point in time um, they would forget that they're under the curses. You know, they would forget who they are. We would forget who we are as a people. We go through a process of our heritage being stripped from us. And go ahead and bring that scripture in now. Jeremiah 17 or Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. Right. Starting all the way with Adam. All right. Part of our heritage is knowing our lineage, knowing our fathers. Like Job said, inquire, I pray thee of the former age, of the search of thy fathers. So the Lord gave us a heritage from Adam all the way into the 12 tribes. A heritage. It says, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my, kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So that's why we see here in Deuteronomy 28. Where the Lord says, it shall be upon thy seed forever. Because that's the Lord's anger continually burning all right and he said he would take our heritage away from us so if we wanted to get back to it all right after finding out about boarding school and going to the scriptures and finding out about payback and first of all you had to find about who you are in order to do that you had to look at the signs and the wonders that were placed upon our people deuteronomy 28 and 48 Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. All right, and you see what happened at Wounded Knee. All right, and these Edomites, they killed off all the buffalo. You see what they did to uh, the tribe of Reuben down there in the Everglades, what we know as today as uh, Florida. All right, that was a horrible, horrible thing that they did to our people. And in the, during those times, a lot of this was fulfilled, hunger, and in thirst, and nakedness. But you think about it now. Uh, you think about it now, everything that we go to, even the, even the uh, materials and stuff that we, we need, necessities, just to have clothes on our back, 
All right, it's not owned by the 12 tribes of Israel. You don't see your tag on the back of your shirt. It don't say made in Gilead, you know what I'm saying? Made by Yashakar, <laughs> you know, made by Bunyamin. You don't see these things. It says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. And the yoke of iron, it didn't only go upon Judah, even though Judah is famous. Judah, Benjamin, Levi is famous for have, seeing those photos. But it also were upon uh, the Gadites, the 12 tribes, all the 12 tribes next. It says, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And this eagle, all right, is a spiritual indicator of who this is talking about. That was that U.S. Calvary. So what Jacob was prophesying to his sons was written for us in these times so that we could connect the dots uh, for the tribe of Gad and the other tribes as well. It says a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, which goes back to this article. All right. It says, but as the Native American Rights Fund noted in its 2013 review, uh, jumping back up, it said it also called for teaching their children in reading, writing and arithmetic. All right. It says Native American boarding schools existed in St. Louis areas as early as 1824 when the Jesuits requested government funds to civilize Native children at, at a seminary minutes outside the city. All right, I want to jump down a little bit. I don't want to read all of this. There's an inter something interesting in here that I did want to um, bring out, though, because you had Judah actually built the building that I have for the screenshot. Where is it at? This building was actually built by Judah. You see that? See how wicked Esau? Esau had us as slaves building this for our for our cousins, basically for our brothers. So Judah built this so they get gag and get put in. And look at this thing, man. This don't look like no school. You know what I'm saying? This don't look like no school, bro. And very few Akwath out there. This ain't no damn school. This looks like a fort prison. Look at these watchtowers. In case Gad tried to run away, you know. Um let me find that section. Give me one second. I wanna find that. Oh, what am I doing? Let me hit the control F. Yeah, here we go. It says the original building known as St. Regis Seminary no longer exists on the same plot of land in the city of, of Flora, uh, Flor, Florissant. In the spot today stands St. Uh, Stanislas Seminary, which was once a foundational foothold for Jesuit work between the Allegheny and Rocky Mountains. The earliest surviving structure of the seminary, known as the Old Rock Building, is a limestone building that was built in 1840 by black people, which is the tribe of Judah. They got a capital B. All right. That's another part of our heritage being taken from us. You know, fucking color. Excuse my language. I'm going to read it how it's supposed to say. It's a limestone building built in 1840 by Judah, people enslaved by the Edomites, as well as some of the, Edom, the Edomite brothers. The boarding school opened a year after the seminary was founded in 1823. According to existing documents, St. Regis Seminary lasted about seven years. All right. But you see. Judah built um, a lot of these boarding schools, you know, and that's one thing that we don't know about. We talk about these boarding schools and payback for it. Well, OK, payback is going to be given to Gad, you know, but payback also is going to be given to Judah and the other tribes because uh, Esau forced us to build these things. All right. Through terror, through fear, through threat, you know. So I'm going to move along here. Uh, let's just go read a couple quick more scriptures here. This is Romans. All right, Paul's letter to the Israelite foreigners that lived in Italy, specifically Rome. All right, Paul's letter to the Israelite foreigners in Rome, the 13th chapter and the 11th, uh, the 10th verse. It says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And Esau was not fulfilling the law in them prisons. All right, it says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Now, I want to keep going through here. read this part it says in st louis uh st louis in st louis that means 
that means compiling an archive of documents and research that delve into the Midwest chapter of a long, painful, yet important American history. It is a history that in many ways started with promises of better education, but instead led to hours of forced labor and beatings documented by Jesuits themselves. So Edomites wrote these things down. You know, they were documenting just like Christopher Columbus documented a lot of things he did and the other Edomite conquistadors. And they put those things down so that right now excavations could happen, you know, so these things could be unearthed. And the treachery of this man, since I said treachery, the treachery of this man um, can be revealed. And stir up the anger, you know, begin the sighing and crying of the, of the real elect. All right. Here's some more recompense. Some more payback. All right, some some mashapatnya. Isaiah or Yeshaya 33 and 1. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and, and dealt treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with, with thee. All right, and you know, we know the stories, all right, of the, of the tribe of Gad showing Esau how to bury his fish with salt, all right, in the different layers of dirt and earth to preserve his fish. All right, he basically showed him how to use a natural refrigerator. All right, but what did Esau do? He gave him diseases, gave him plagues, sold him false, sold Gad false dreams and lies and petitions, and uh, what are they call uh, treaties, bar, uh, uh, barayath, all right, which means uh, an agreement or a covenant. It says, When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, recompense. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherous, they are right, specifically. Who Jacob was talking to in Genesis 49 because remember he said Gad a troop shall overcome you but you're gonna overcome at the last all right so when it says they shall do treacherous with thee we're talking about the ones that you put down all right we'll be talking about uh, uh, these the descendants of these people right here all right and we don't and all you Israelites who are just now listening and tuning in don't listen to these other groups that are saying that you got to be dark skinned or that this is Moab. All right. These are Edomites. All right. These are not Edomites. These are uh, Israelites. Excuse me. All right. These are Israelite children. Edomite. These are all Gadites. These are all Gadites. All right. And you do have you do have a lot of Gadites that look like Judites too. Look, look at Friar Tuck. Look at Friar Tuck. Fucking Edomite, man. His ass going to get in the kingdom, whoever he is. Look at this. Payback is coming for this. This is a, this is a classroom full of Gadites. All right. You all this Gadite. <laughs> I know some brothers <laughs> that if they had kids, they would look like this. All right. Um, let's keep moving on. I already read moving out the ancient landmark. Um, let me scroll down. There's still some more here down here in this article. Just a couple other points I want to hit and then I'm going to wrap up. All right. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Here's the pricing. I'll give you just to show. It says Calhoun replied that President James Monroe was on board and the U.S. government would send 800 annually around 20,000 in today's dollars once the school is up and running with a suitable number of students across the country about 10,000 was allocated annually through the 1819 Civilization Fund Act largely to mission schools to convert see that to convert Indians Gadites from hunters to agriculturists and documented in 2016 congressional report however St. Regis did not always receive the full amount from the fund each year um, now let me just Here we go. This says their idea. This is continue. Just some more about this boarding, this boarding school crap. All right, and the recompense thereof. It says their idea would have been: we want to help these children. We want to take them out of. And see, this devil is. is this says his words are smooth, smoother than butter. All right, this is this is the. Uh, this is that margarine right here. This is that GMO, that GMO butter. All right. We want to help these children. We want them to, t we want to take them out of their native American cultures and assimilate them and make them believe in Protestant Christianity. Like elder, elder, uh, 
elder and apostle Tahar says, Protestant Christianity is, is plantation Christianity. All right, it says, make them cut their hair, make them ad adopt white Christian names, adopt work styles that are considered appropriate and dominant for the time, she said. But underneath all of that, Warren emphasized, was a, race, was a racialized agenda to erase Native culture and, and to try to make Native Americans and their culture and their identities disappear over several generations. That's the Willie Lynch letters. That's what I'm saying. Gad got it just like Judah. Gad got it just like Judah. Look at this. Look at this shit, bro. That's why I had to. I had to do a video on this. Got my my spirit fired up. It says, but underneath all of that, Warren emphasized was a racialized, and that's the same thing today, man. Esau be coming with that bullshit, and Jake just be falling for it. But really, there was a racialized agenda to erase, I'll say, Israelite culture, and to try to make uh, Gadites and their culture and their identities disappear over several generations which makes me want to get my next um scripture i'll read jeremiah again jeremiah 17 and 4 and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that i gave thee all right and i will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever um hosea 1 and verse uh 10 says, yet the number of the children of Yashar Allah, Israel, shall be as the sands of the sea. All right, look at this picture. That's the sands of the sea. Where's that other picture? Here it is. Look at this. Look at that, man. Tell me that's not the sands of the sea. If you just, if you went in here and tried to count, I guarantee you're not going to get the right amount <laughs> on your first go around just looking at this picture coming through here and counting. You know, I bet you seven cents. <laughs> all right back to hosea 1 and, and 10 again it says and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people right you're not native americans all right that's not your language you know if you're you're calling on uh, yahweh are you loosely calling on yahweh you need to stop it it says there it shall be said unto them ye are the sons of the living power you are yasha allah Genesis 49, what did Jacob tell us, tell his sons and in in what would happen to him in the last days, where they'd be situated, what would happen to them? What did Moses say in Deuteronomy 28? Why is that important? You know, the other curses are basic, but they're deep. <laughs> There's some deep basics, you know. We got Psalms, at the Hoyim 83 and uh, 1, it says, keep not thou silence, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. All right, and how did they lift up the head? By establishing these schools, you know? Because when you lift up your head, that means you got a, a certain pomp and haughtiness and pride about you, you know? Look at this. Research conducted and, and compiled by Kelly Schmidt uh, Pod. A postdoctoral research associate at Washington University in St. Louis shows how unhappy the children were and how violent their conditions could be. Schmidt, who included some of these research in her dissertation, found an 1825 letter from Reverend Charles F. Van Quickenborn, who was in charge and the Edomite. All right, we could probably look him up and find out that he's an Edomite. Who was in charge of the seminary which noted that the native american boys all wept when the hoe was put in their hands for the first time right because it wasn't part of their culture to uh to be forced to do some of the things that they were doing a hoe is speaking about a, a, a instrument that you use for gardening because what was happening they would take the uh they would take the gadai children uh, of a certain age and they would send them and make them do hard labor they make them serve slavery basically just like judah was serving slavery you know so there's times of course there's times they're waking up in this boarding school a foreign place and then one day they say here they give them this and they tell them to go out in the sun and work all damn day you know well at the same time monitoring making sure that he's not turning and praying or trying to speak in his language you know what i'm saying because they were getting beaten for that you know they were getting tied to trees and stuff all right yeah here it is right here though the jesuits often claim the boys would be studying schmidt said documents indicate otherwise the boys work increasingly became devoted to physical work 
Records show that they were frequently made to do manual labor without compensation, being treated as enslaved people. We know who that's talking about. That's us, she said. All right. So a lot of these boarding schools, it wasn't just assimilation. Oh, we're just going to do away with your heritage in the classroom. No, they did it physically out in the field. They were hanging gadites. They were uh, uh, tying gadites to horses, body parts flying around. All right. Uh, they were they were bringing the parent, one of the parents and, and kill the parent in front of the whole classroom. Crazy stuff was going on. All right. And that's part of Psalms 83. It says they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. All right. And how was the crafty counsel? Well, part of it was getting Judah to build these to house Gad. Again, I had no idea you had Judites. Judah, they took enslaved Judites to build this to enslave more Gadites. So fuck Esau, man. Esau, wicked as hell, boy. It says, they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that's why when you pay back, that's why it's, it's seeing it's a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation that trouble you. Tribulation, you telling me I can't trace my, my lineage and my heritage because of another race of people? And it's in the scriptures. Well, of course, the Lord definitely has to pay back for that. It says, for they have consulted all together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Right. Because you didn't have. I'm pretty sure it was well known that these schools are being set up in other countries. You didn't have Moabites coming to our aid. Right. You didn't have Hamites building ships to try and chase Edomites to come stop us from getting served in slavery. All right. You didn't have a, a Japhet. And all these other 18 nations, Ishmael and Aram and Ammonites coming to help us out with the condition that was going on between uh, 1600 and up until now. You're just not going to see it. All right. Nobody's coming to the aid of the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. Why? Because we're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Prophecy says it. Right, we're reading a prophetic song that's actually supposed to be sung. All right, 83rd chapter, the fifth verse, the Hoyim, for they have consulted together one consent. They are confederate against thee. Who? All right, who is it? The tabernacles of Edom, so-called white man. The Ishmaelites, the Arabs. Moab, all right, uh, you're Chinese. And the Hagarines, I believe those are Hamites. And Gabal, and Ammon, Japanese, and Amalek, more the chief of Esau. All right, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot, Salah, and the way that they did it again, all right, was through this system of boarding schools, all right, and there was horrible stuff going on in here, man, it says, uh, oh, yeah, this is another part I want to read before I, uh, I'm going to turn to the comment board in a second, another part I want to read right here, all right, it says, blasting de a descendant of Cherokee, Creek, Choctaw, Shawnee, and Pata, Pata, uh, Potawatomi people founded and serves as the executive director of the American Indian Digital History Project, an online cache for researchers to preserve rare indigenous archives. It says for European peoples at that time, there was no mention of us in biblical terms. So she's ignorant there. There was no mention of these lands, Blanca said. The existence of native people then throws a wrench into their religion, philosophy, the libraries of culture, they have been ingrained with the church, especially through Europe. Let me read that again. It says, for European people, for Edomite peoples at that time, there was no mention of us in biblical terms. Now, what this Gadite woman doesn't know is that Second Ezra. All right. Second Ezra 13, because that's one of the reasons they didn't want us reading the scriptures. And they're pretty, prob pretty sure they didn't let Gad read scriptures or have apocryphers in these boarding schools because of this right here. So this is second Ezra 13, because she's just ignorant. All right. She's speaking from a point of not knowing, having the spirit of Yahweh Basham El Shai, uh, Basham Kakwadash, Holy Spirit. 13 and 40. Second Ezra 13 and 40. These, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Oshia, the king. All right. So it goes way back to before uh, the 1600s. It goes way back before 1819, the establishment of that, that school, uh, St. Regis. All right. Uh, our people were here way before that. Whom Shalemazar, whom Shalemazar, 
uh, Slaka, who Solomon's are the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. All right, but they took this counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. What heathen? Shalamanzar's people are right, the Assyrians, because everyone knows that the ten tribes went to captivity in the Assyrian Empire. It says they would lead the multitudes of the heathen and go forth into another, into a further country where never mankind dwelt. All right, so what is that talking about? That's talking about here the Americas. So in this article where she's saying you're a people, pe yes, it does throw a wrench in they're saying that they discovered this place but at the same time you have to remember a lot of these explorers got over here because they knew that existed all right yes you might have had some that were just following along some that may were born here and you know what i'm saying they actually believed in the whole discovery you know but a lot of them had um what do you call them the people who make maps maps uh, cartographers you had cartographers of those times who would make maps all right and the way that they they were able to make these maps and shape them was based off of um, the scriptures and of course the the seamen of all right so it says the existence of native people then throws a wrench into the religion philosophy that libraries and of cultures that have been ingrained with the church especially through europe so again it said, where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land, which goes back to Deuteronomy 28. And that's why the curses were placed upon Gad, and why this troop came upon you. You didn't understand their language, then you were, it was beaten to you to understand English. All right, they said there was only, they could only find one name of their of the remaining people. I think his name was Maximus. All right, this ain't no Gadite name. It says, while details about the native boys at St. Regis remain scant in the available archives, there is one name, Maximus. All right, and this guy, I want to look this guy up still. I want to look this nigga up. Is it red? He's probably a red Hebrew Edomite. Oh, no, that's not him. Hold on. Bear with Jake. His full name. Maybe that is him. Yeah. Ripples from La Prairie Voyager Canoes Pascal with Kick with Kickapoo Indian Nation. I don't know if that's him. All right. Let's do this. See, this is the part of studying, you know? If you're getting impatient and <laughs> you think it's getting boring, well, you need to study. Some. Studying is fun, man. Look these people up. I don't want to see if there's a wiki on them. All right. I guess not. Well, you know he's an eater, Mike. All right. He was a recount of what was going on all right he was he was uh, in charge of the seminary which noted the native american boys oh, he's the one that noted that they all wept at night you know they're all sad because of what was being done to them and again their payback's coming for that you know but i basically hit all the scriptures i wanted to um let's see if there's anything in here yeah this is a good one the kingdom within this is uh second Ezra 15 21 it says like like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also in recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord power, Yahweh Bashim Shai. So there's that payback the Lord's talking about. Um, I can give you Ezekiel 25. I'm going to end it right here. All right, Ezekiel 25. Look, you go through. Everybody going to get it. Everybody going to get that Yahweh Bashim Shai work. Going to get that Mashapat. All right, so this is... Uh, Moab, Edom, Ezekiel 25, 12. Thus saith the Lord power, because Edom had dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and had greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Now, this didn't happen in Ezekiel's time, and it hasn't happened after. All right, even though you had uh, Judas Maccabees jacking Esau up a little bit, we got the temple, you know, we rededicated uh, the temple. All right, after that, the Romans took over. You know what I'm saying? And plus, you didn't have, we didn't have 10 tribes weren't there fighting with uh Judas Maccabees. You gotta remember that, all right. So, even in um, 
even during the time of the Dark Ages, which our people were ruling, our people were ruling, but they were heavy into paganism. You didn't have the ten tribes over here in Europe ruling, and during the time of the the Dark Ages, they were over here fighting against Esau. All right, and Esau was taking vengeance upon us. All right, and that's and the way that he was doing it in the Dark Ages, it was through papistry. All right, just like he did with Gad. Said that um, more than it says the schools more than 350 government funded and, and often church run schools across the United States in the 19th and 20th centuries. All right, so these schools, these boarding schools, and manipulation and the simulation, they were government funded and they were church run. All right, so the Lord's going to get you. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. Adawam, so-called white man, and will cut off man and beast from him. All right, why does man and beast have to be cut off from Esau? Well, look what he did to the buffalo in Gad's land. All right, Esau, you knowing Esau's wicked ass, he probably tried to lay down with some of them buffalo before he killed them all off. All right, and that's why the man and beast has to be taken from Esau. Because anything walking with two feet, Esau will try to defile, and anything walking with more than two feet, Esau will try to defile. So it has to be stripped from him, just like Job said. He don't even want you around his dogs. You know what I'm saying get get away from my uh my German shepherd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get away from my 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 hound. And I will make it a desolate from teeming, and they of D Dan shall fall by the sword. Now how is it gonna happen? And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. Gad is a descendant of Israel. There's twelve thousand out of that tribe is gonna get a reward. We read it in Revelation, and those that fear the name. All right, because you had a lot of Edomite children, they had they had our children uh, with chains around their necks. You see it in, uh, I, think, I think it was a Django or Goodbye Uncle Tom. Treating um, around our children's necks like they were toys, you know, like they were pets, you know. They were putting, putting neck, putting uh, nooses, nooses around Jake's neck and, 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 and dragging them around, you know. So it says, and they shall do and eat them according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord, power, Yahweh Bashmael Shai. You know, but um, that's pretty. That's pretty much it. You know, that's pretty much it through the spirit. Um, I hit a lot of scriptures, went through a lot of topics. Let me. Uh, this article, what I was reading from, is uh, should be in the description of this video. And what I'll do is I'll post this in the chat in case you want to go through and read it. It's pretty lengthy, but hey, it's a good read. Um, it's a good read through the spirit. Um, some good information in here uh, based on uh, this boarding school, St. Regis in uh, St. Louis, you know. And this is this is this man's fault, all right? Him and the likes thereof. This is why we call him Esau, <laughs> because of this, right here. Eat him. Adawam, all right, and Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, the Indian killer. You know, he had a he he hated us vehemently. You know, he did not he did not like Gad. You know, he did not like Gad at all. You know, <laughs> he hated Gad. But yeah, man, all praises to you, by Shemal Shai. You know, shalom to the elect, praying to know you're edified and double honors to our elders and apostles coming back in the reincarnation known as Great Millstone. A Barakatha Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Kakadash. Shalom.